I decided to learn to paint clouds and I made tons of mistakes and I'll go through them so that you can learn faster than me. I'll show you a quick time lapse of a painting that turned out pretty nice and I'll give you my thoughts and tips on how to paint clouds. I'm naturally drawn to more expressive and even abstract kind of work, not super realistic work. Naturally, that's where I go. So I was never really drawn to paint a realistic fluffy cloud, but I know that acquiring new skills and learning how things work gives me more freedom in my creative process so I thought clouds the first thing I tried was using a brush and only white paint focusing on the tops of the clouds and trying to get that fluffy cumulus feeling it kind of worked but not completely then I moved on to try to use a sponge. First, I tried a sponge that was a lot more textured and it didn't really give a natural feeling of clouds. Then I tried a makeup type of sponge and that worked a lot better. I liked working with the sponge to shape the clouds, but I found that it didn't really work on a normal kind of piece of paper, let, let's say eight by 10 or 11 by 14 the clouds became really big, really fast. So I didn't have enough room to put in details. I would use a sponge on a large canvas, but mainly I would probably use a brush. And because of my first attempt with just using white, fading it to the natural blue sky, I decided to add a little bit of color in the second attempt with the sponge. So I put in a little bit of pink and that really helped shaping the clouds, putting in some shadows and then fading them together. The result to me was kind of interesting, but there was also something wrong with it. So I tried another attempt and I decided to go with a pink sky and have pink clouds to shake things up and keep things interesting. I went back to the first technique using a paintbrush. And the mistakes that I made here, there are a few, but one of the mistakes is that I used a small brush to shape all the clouds. So they all turned out with the same size or same proportion. And when I looked at all my clouds and I did a little bit more research Research, I realized that composition, perspective played a lot into it. And that's where I noticed my biggest mistake. I was painting my clouds straight across the page and all the same size. So it turned out very flat, more like a cartoon, instead of having that perspective feeling. If you look at a photo of real clouds, you see that whatever is at the top of the picture is super big because it's closer to you. And as it goes farther on the horizon, it gets really small. So in a painting, the first thing to do is to decide where the horizon line is. You can put like a, a reference, like a line, then paint small clouds close to the horizon. And as you get to the center of the page or a little bit higher and at the top of the page, you go dramatically bigger. In my compositions, I had a lot of clouds going on, but I didn't have to be that busy in the composition. I could have had two strips of clouds or concentrate the clouds in a specific area of my painting instead of having them kind of distributed equally, which gave more of a flat feeling. Before I go on about perspective, another thing to keep in mind is to vary the size of the brush. So when painting those small clouds using a, a smaller brush will have a better proportion as opposed to having a bigger brush or bigger strokes on the top of the page. That's something that I didn't really think about. I was shaping my clouds with the same brush the whole time and I was forgetting to vary my stroke. You can use a smaller brush with bigger strokes to create different sizes, obviously, but it's easier to achieve it with a larger brush. I would say using a medium sized brush and then a small brush would be ideal. One thing that I was getting right was to concentrate my highlights at the tops of the clouds, the tops of the bubbles of the clouds, and then fading it to a darker shade because usually with clouds, the shadows are more in the center and at the bottom and the tops are a lot wider. But in that, there's two things that I was forgetting. To get a more realistic feel, the shadows should not necessarily just be a blended or more transparent variation of the white that I was using. It works, but it's not ideal. It's better to use the color of the sky, but change it a little bit, make it a bit more muted and grayish. So I would start with that blue sky, add a little bit of black, add a bit of white, create a grayish blue, as dark or light as I wanted to create the shadows in my clouds. And the same goes for highlights. If you look at a sky, 
the white of the clouds are not necessarily always super white. You can put a tiny bit of yellow in your white to create the highlights. You can even put a little bit of red or a little bit of purple maybe to get a little bit more of a rich pigment in your highlight and mix that with pure white as well. I was using mostly white the whole way through and fading it and that contributed to that very flat kind of feeling in the end. My other perspective mistake was the way I overlapped my clouds. I had it completely backwards. For some reason, I was focusing on the tops of my clouds to shape the cloud shape. And I was starting with my big clouds, then overlapping smaller clouds on top, which is ridiculous because in perspective and in reality, all the smaller clouds are farther in the horizon. Therefore, anything that's bigger and closer will overlap and hide the tops of those small clouds. If they're overlapping, they don't have to be overlapping. You can have very small clouds in the horizon, but nothing overlapping them. Then you wouldn't have that problem. But if you try to overlap some clouds, the big ones have to hide the tops of the small ones. All right, let's go to the time lapse of the painting that I created that turned out pretty well. The sky is not perfect, but I still like the result. Then I'll come back with my thoughts and some tips for painting clouds. I'm really happy with this even if it's not perfect. One of the things that bother me a little bit with it is the shadows where the smaller cloud overlap a little bit the bigger clouds. It's not so bad but I could have done a better job in the shadows. I feel like that's where I'm having a little bit more problems in the shadows of the cloud and blending them and creating that perspective. I have to keep working on that. But if you've never tried to paint clouds before and you don't know where to start, the best tips that I would have for you is to focus on creating perspective. And there's many ways to create perspective. One is to have the smaller clouds closer to the horizon line, very small. The bigger clouds at the top of the page taking the most space in your composition and having that composition not flat as in not distributing a bunch of clouds evenly on your sky and more having things asymmetrical. Less is more in many cases. You could have one big clouds and a little bit of smaller clouds in the horizon as opposed to having so many like me like uh, scattered a little bit everywhere don't do like me don't overlap small clouds on top of big clouds start painting the small clouds first then paint the bigger clouds on top and if you don't want that problem just don't overlap clouds you could easily avoid that problem if the clouds don't overlap i don't know why i was trying to overlap my clouds so much another key point in creating perspective is colors so the smaller and the farther in the horizon, the more muted the color will be. So whatever blue or white you're using, 
creating a muted version of that, adding a touch of black, just a tiny bit of black, will make the color a little dimmer. Not using only white, so putting a little bit of yellow in the white, a little bit of pink here and there, and creating those different shades of grays will help in the shadows, and the different shades of highlights will really help to give that 3D effect and more perspective. One thing I have to say though, is if you're struggling with painting clouds or whatever else, and you feel like things are not coming together, keep going. So do your best to do whatever you're trying to do and then move on to the next step and finish the painting. I was getting very discouraged at some point during the, the process, but I gave it my best for the clumsy clouds that I was making and then I decided to finish it even if it wasn't perfect. I didn't put in tons of hours in finishing the painting, but I decided to kind of like do something minimal to have it done. And very often at the beginning stages or even in the middle of a painting, things are super messy and it feels like it doesn't come together. But at the end, very often it kind of comes together and after a day or two, you look at your artwork and there's parts of it that you really love, parts of it that could be better, but overall, I feel like I learned things and I'm really happy that those paintings are finished and not kind of like something that I'm not going to keep and just throw away because I didn't finish it. I, I gave up on this one, but I'm happy that even if these are not perfect, I finished them. This was kind of a weird one. It was me telling you how I don't know how to do things. But if you'd like useful tips on things that I actually know what I'm talking about, you can watch this one. Please subscribe and hit the bell. I'll see you in just a few days for another one. Thanks for watching.